Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Rochelle and today's video is super exciting. Follow Mike and myself as we travel through the Colombian wilderness on a four day trek to seek out the lost city. This trek was by far the hardest thing I've ever done to date and I know Mike will agree with me here. We're doing this. <laughs> I hope you find this video super informative and just really dive in with us as we experience blood, sweat and tears all on the quest of our final destination, the Lost City. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. This is hands down the hardest thing I have ever done. Stones we carry so we've got the bus tickets, so for 12.45, so we've got 20 minutes, and they were 50,000 each, which is pretty good for a five hour journey. And if you forgot to get snacks or drinks before coming here, there's literally like a bunch of these kiosks everywhere. Lay beside me, wake the morning. made it to the room in Santa Marta which we are renting for four or five days so that we can leave our stuff here whilst we go on the hike and come back. We'll catch you guys at the beginning of our trek tomorrow. Good morning beautiful people, it is day one of the trek. We are up and awake, Mike is just showering and we're waiting for the Jeep I suppose to pick us up. Lovely girlfriend this morning came in with a coffee which I'm very appreciative. <laughs> I had a hot chocolate Yes. Cheers to the beginning of our trek. I think today is going to be one of the easier days. I suppose we'll catch you on our journey. In the Jeep and we're on the way. So this is the office where we've just paid. Oh, there's me. We're waiting for two more people, so we've quickly ordered. The sun is swollen, rest tomorrow, the ways unfolding. We've made it to our first checkpoint. I think we're getting a wristband. Everyone talks Spanish and I don't. We're learning some Spanish words. Un poco. For Andrew, that's one chicken. I'm surviving. So we've arrived. That was the bumpiest ride of my life. So this is like a little map of what we've done. We've come up on this. This is where we are now. Day one, we climb up to here and I think stay the night here. Day two, day three. So, slight plot twist here. Day three, we actually go all the way up to the top and day four is our trek all the way back down to the base. We are starting a little trek now. Are you ready? I am, I am ready. But your first leg is about three hours, so we will come back with clips yeah. as and when. Entonces nos encontramos en este punto, el mamey o machete, machete pelado. Vamos a caminar esta parte naranjada hasta el alojamiento de Alfredo. Pero esta fruta ya, como no es comercial, no se está cultivando en Colombia, es desapareciendo en extinción. ¿Alguien quiere probarlo? Oh, that's <laughs> Go for it. Do you remember what it was called? Oh, it's sweet. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Okay, you'll jump. Okay, it's good. We'll be in. We've been walking for like 20 minutes. This is my 20 minute check in. Lord, send help. It's super easy. She thinks it's more difficult. This walk is super easy, not hard at all. Okay, I'm just kidding. The reason I didn't take any video on the way is because I was dying. It is so, so hot. I bought myself two Gatorades. They taste a lot sweeter up here. And thank you. I think we have one more hour of walking before we get to our camp for the night, but it is really beautiful here. Hill never fucking ends. You can 
Just her teaching me the Spanish alphabet in this hill. Got our freshly squeezed orange juice. Cheers. To body they taste it. <laughs> Doesn't get fresher than that. It's crazy how the landscapes change so much because now we're going up this path. It's very much sort of chalky, salty aesthetic. As you would have seen, we just stopped for some orange juice, which was really nice, really, really tasty. I don't know how much longer we have left. Not as easy as it looks. Nothing for you, Sinkies. Sorry. <laughs> this is Michael's OOTD. Yes. You right there, Mike? And there's more to go. <sighs> We're doing it. Lots of fun. Definitely for good fitness levels. I would make sure if you are at least trained before this, you can just do walking full stop. If you are going to train for this, I recommend doing a lot of the treadmill and a lot of the incline walking. That being said, I was actually saying to Mike that there is a lot of breaks so you can get fresh orange juice. We just stop for watermelon. So not impossible, but challenging. Really quiet, peaceful. To be honest, the walk is really pleasurable when we're walking on like flatter terrain because you're like, oh, what a nice walk in the wilderness. Almost as beautiful as a Mercedes Benz. At least we're going downhill now. Hey, look at all this clay. And that's versatility for you. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's very bouncy. I was not expecting that. Right, Mikey's turn. He's going across yet another singular bridge. There's also a big gap right here. It's Rashi's turn. So the first camp that we stopped at was full, I guess. So we're going to the next one, which is about 10 minutes away. How's my dad's name? So sad. I hope that's where we're sleeping tonight. Oh my God, I think we've made it. I'm super excited to just put down my things, take off my boots, just the basic things really. So you come down this terrain, up through here, and then this must be it. Chimpkins. Oh my God, there's parrots. Hey, look, parrots. We've got little tables and chairs in here. Finally taking our bags off. We've got the kitchen there. And of course, COVID hygiene everywhere you go. These are the camps. We get to choose which bed we want. Bunk beds with mosquito nets. The inside, the sheets are actually really clean, which is good to know. And it's got pink sheets. What more could I want in life? So I'm naturally in heaven because there's birds everywhere. This should be a fun night. So it's five o'clock now and we've got dinner in half an hour. My game plan is to have a shower now before, you know, everyone goes through it so I can be nice and clean and just relax. So let's check out the showers. So these are the showers here. There's actually quite a lot, so I'm very surprised by that. And then the toilets and me. Right, let's go inside. First off, where are the lights? Potentially there's no lights. No lights? Uh, I don't, you can I tell me. I'm not turning on the generator. So maybe there might not be any hot water. I don't think there's no hot water. That's <laughs> not safe. <laughs> Okay, so no hot water, no lights, we can do this. So out of the shower, nice and clean. I'm wearing just a grey tank top and then some long trousers just lounge about in the camp. So I recommend bringing comfy loungewear. I'm just gonna hang out until dinner and I'll show you guys what we get served. I got a fish, rice, plantain and a salad. I'm very excited and so is the cat that is waiting to eat. Hi kitty cat. I'm just type in the camp. Mm -mm -mm. This is the dessert, gone. Todos visten de blanco, muy básico, usan una mochila. Los arruacos viven a esta parte de la sierra. Los huevos viven en la sierra. Los kogi viven por aquí, más arriba. Ustedes hacen una ceremonia y los hombres reciben esto. Presenta el útero y el hombre. El poporo, esto es una fruta. Le quitan la parte, lo secan y acá adentro... Lo que ellos hacen es que cogen 
una manotada de hojas, la ponen en la boca y comienzan a masticar. <risa> So it's the end of day one now. I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys and see you in the morning. I've been told to check my bed before I get into it, check my shoes tomorrow morning, and if I need to go to the toilet in the middle of the night, wear shoes. So basically, watch out for bugs before you go to bed in the morning and basically throughout the day. Also, this is the charging setup. Three to four hours of electricity tonight, so everyone is getting in whilst they can. See you tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome back. It's day two. Sure. We had a 5 a.m. wake up call, which was basically a flashing light at our beds, which you didn't wake up to. No. Let's go get breakfast and start day two of trekking. I'm very excited for a busy day. And coffee. And coffee. Let's coke go. Leaves. And coke leaves. Breakfast is served. Mike's getting a coffee, and I'm going to get a hot chocolate. Every you Jam or for the toast. Yeah. We're about to begin day two. Here we go. So this is a little rest stop that we're at. So we did 45 minutes and I'm pretty sure we're getting some water. Oh. <laughs> How was that first 45 minutes? Without the sun, it's, it's not terrible. Yeah, the sun hasn't come out yet. It's just like being on that stair stepper machine at the gym. <laughs> But it doesn't and end. It, so we have our watermelon, watermelon. watermelon sugar. Uh, they have toilets here and also you can get coffees, which is cool. just finished our little break and we're on our way back up to walk. I think the next part of our little trek is to speak to some indigenous communities. Found a little puppy on the trail. So cute. Oh my god. Oh, I love it. So cute. Look at how cute he is. Oh my god, you need to stroke him. Hi, baby. Oh, he says hi. Hi. Do you want some tickles? Do you want some tickles? Are you part of the squad? Look, he likes me. Okay, Ross made a new friend. Looks like Jurassic Park. <laughs> It is so beautiful here, like the topography of the land and all the, the foliage, like everything is so pretty. The terrain is difficult, like honestly I was just saying how lucky we are to be able to come out here and see this because not everyone can do this, like if you're not fit enough then I'm sorry but like you cannot come out here and like I said I'm barely fit enough to do this so it's tough but this leg of the journey has been super like relaxed, they've been in the shade most of the time so it's been really nice. Hello, so we're gonna try some coca leaves. Go take a handful like that, a little bit more mm -hmm. and put it in your mouth on one side. <laughs> <laughs> but don't swallow the saliva. The colors, uh, oh, okay. So after a few minutes you feel on like a noon, stays here, that way you can mix with the lime color. So we'll keep in your mouth in one slice and you'll chew mm -hmm. and spit. Okay, I just spat it out. Am I meant to spit all the leaves out? No. I spat all the leaves out. Okay, so I wasn't meant to spit the leaves out, but I did. Oops. <laughs> it, I mean, it does taste exactly like you're chewing a plant. Our first time trying coca leaves in Colombia. Apparently it's just going to give you a little numb, but then when you put something acidic <laughs> in your mouth, like lime, something like that, that's when you apparently get the big feeling, I guess. 
So I've tried again. I got a little tiny bit this time. I'm so not used to having something at the side of my mouth. Half my tongue and my cheek is numb. My tongue is definitely numb now. My mouth is definitely numb. That's the end of my tongue. After our first coca leaf experience, we found ourselves in Camp Wiwa. This camp is just one of the many settlements that Wiwan indigenous people have on the mountain. Lo usan cuando tienen alguna celebración, una fiesta o hay algún problema en una misión médica. Bajan de la montaña, cada familia coge una casa. reached a disinfection point where we are getting our temperatures done and even sprayed down. Here we are. So we've just arrived in the camp where we're going to have a lunch and go swimming. So everyone's hanging up their clothes. My towel and socks are here. Everyone's bags and then when we're going to eat lunch. I'm excited to change and swim, get some fun shots in the water with Rosh and everyone else. Super Mero. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You need to come here because my big coat is like putting me away. It was so much fun, it's very cold and the current was just so strong but it was really great. Now we've gotten changed and we're going to go eat some food. Look how beautiful this is in my soup. I am so excited for this. This is the main meal, grilled chicken, rice, salad and obviously the soup. Are you excited? Oh yeah. How good does the soup look? It looks amazing. And to drink we have our con panuela until we get to the camp where we're staying tonight. I am here and Mike is all the way down there. This is the state of us now. We've got an hour walking uphill. Woo! It's Stavian. It's Stavian. This is the view though, so it kind of makes it worthwhile. <laughs> My son's dying. If you're watching this and you think, oh, I can do it, you like you cannot be any less fit than me. I am the benchmark. <laughs> but I'm even taking Mike's bag because he was struggling. So we've come and stopped for another break, thank God. And now we've got some yummy fruit. What are you gonna eat? Yes. I'm going straight for an orange. Okay, so we made it to like our next rest stop. They had Wi-Fi in the middle of nowhere. They had Wi-Fi, it was 4,000 pesos. I bought that, of course. Upload a few pictures and let the family know I'm alive. We have, I think, an hour and a half left. And Rosh is coming out of the toilet right now. Vamos. Oh my god, we're about 30 minutes from camp and I'm oh, me. dying. This last bit is just, it just never ends. Like you're going really steep and then you get to the top bit of the steep bit and then there's another fucking steep bit. Like, it's a lot. I'll wait for you like you waited for me when you went up the hill earlier. Occasionally on our journey up and down the mountain, we would bump into the indigenous children and people across our paths. This was a great way to integrate our journeys together and highlight the similarities and differences between us. Here comes Rossi. I should have never done this to my body. Oh my gosh, thank God. In the distance, what we can see. We made it, Michael. He's like, nope, I'm gone. So 
we are washed and showered, we put our bags and up. I've just bought a little chocolate bowl. Or people say un ciento nueve because it looks like the number. Oh. It's caramel and chocolate and really good and bumpy on the top. That's the texture. Mike's really scoffed his, as you can imagine. One by one wonder. But I really don't want to because the day was very difficult, but you know, I enjoyed it. If you love your body, don't ever do something like this. I think we're going to hang out until dinner's ready, but boy, I guess it feel good to be like not moving and on solid land. The feet should be ready soon. <laughs> Mike is having an internal dilemma, as always. Dude, my right knee hurts so bad. I'm genuinely worried about tomorrow. Sipping on sunshine. Okay, dinner has arrived. We have spaghetti and cheese. Our bed for the night. We are sharing and our things below. If you want to kill someone you know, bring them here and tell them it's easy and then they'll die. If you hate your parents, your siblings, an aunt and uncle, bring them on this thing and say And make them pay for it easy. as well. Can you believe we paid for this torture? We paid to feel like this. But if you do this tour, do the same one we did because Michael, he's exceptional. Like, he's literally been the best tour guide ever. Miguel. Um, we'll put it down below. But anyway, we're going to leave day two here with you guys. We've showed you our camps. We've had dinner and we're probably going to drink and go to bed. Adios. It's breakfast time. This is where we're all sitting. Okay, so we've just had breakfast with like a arepa with cheese and some sausages. Now I don't eat meat, so I always save the meat that I get by accident and I take it and I give it to the dogs and cats I see along the way. Okay, putting on my soaking wet shoes. Nothing really fully dried last night. It also poured down rain. All my problems should be solved. Okay, so I think we're all getting ready to leave. We've managed to leave some of our stuff to dry. So behind this mountain is a lost city. Before we get there, we have to climb 1,200 steps. So this should be interesting. We have to cross the river on this rope. Good luck, baby. We're going up our chances because the water is high to bumping. Beyond the stars, I'm where the sun sets. We'll find the light and we'll keep it our secret. Oh, can't believe I'm about to go across this. Oh my god. Okay, Michael's turn. Down at Eagle. Anyway, we made it across the river and now it's to do 1,200 steps. Good luck to you, Dad. Good luck to My knee is not looking forward to those 1,200 steps. Okay, so I thought the steps weren't that bad at first, but now I realize they're going straight up the mountain. I can't even handle I thought they were going to be like more flat. Oh, this isn't even the end and it looks daunting. <laughs> oh my god, I think we made it. So they give you like a little passport when you get up to the top of the steps. And if you bring your real passport, they'll actually stamp it for you. This is the first checkpoint before we go up to La Ciudad Perdida. Okay, I think these are the last few steps before we enter the lost city. made it to the Lost City. The Lost City is said to be as old as 600 BC with 5,000 inhabitants. There are four levels and where you would stay would be based on superiority. So, you know, if you're the real deal, you're at the top. And if you're a merchant, you're at the bottom level. This is why this area is referred to as El Mercado, although this was named by the explorers. This tree here only grows here and in Venezuela. It's because of the altitude. Interestingly, they said, unlike the Mayans and Aztecs who built walls around their camps to protect themselves, here they didn't need to because it's so high up and so steep that no one would try and fuck with them essentially. 
As you walk through the Lost City, you're going to notice stone circular bases. These are the bases for where houses used to be. Houses made out of wood and mud that of course over time deteriorated, leaving in its place a circular base. So every time I think we've like reached the top, I look ahead and we have not. You're saying this is basically once in a lifetime because not everyone has the strength to do this walk and get to see these amazing things. <laughs> if you're coming here by the way, remember the mosquito repellent. There are so many up here that you can even watch them bite you and they fly off. And even if you think you don't get bitten, because I'm one of those people, they you bite do. you here. They don't discriminate here. He said there was 30 sectors to the Lost City. Some of them we would have walked past on our way here, but they're covered by forests. So only four sectors that are uncovered will we see today, but I thought it was interesting. 30 and some of them we would have walked past. Walking up to the next part now. Vamos a entrar a un camino distinto, bien definido, tres pedazos. Este era un camino para personas importantes. So we are going through the <laughs> superior people entrance and this is where the path for the normal people join the superior people's path. Realmente no se sabe qué significa. Son hipótesis. Hay interpretación indígena y hay interpretación arqueólogos. As you can see, there are three stars on the face of the rock. In one instance, these stars represent el pueblos, the towns, and the lines represent the roads leading to them. My favorite meaning, the magical meaning, is that these stars and lines would light up whenever there was a problem in the camps, dependent on the placement of the sun, and the indigenous people would interpret this map to help them with their problems. Most of the houses did have gold underneath. They buried their loved ones with gold. So that was two to three meters below each of these little houses, because a house would have been here on this space. <laughs> Fool's gold. Fool's gold. Okay, we're going up the Queen's stairs to the next sector. We were born with gold on the inside, gold on the inside. We were alive, we're sipping on sunshine. We wanna taste. Wait, just fall down. Is he okay? Is he okay? The stop in? So the men and women traditionally live separately, but this centre here was a common area. So this would be where the men, women and children would all unite. And he was saying that there is a certain time of year where the indigenous people come here, tourists like us are banned, and then the indigenous people come here to celebrate and dance and share things, which is it nice. And yet there's even more levels to go. The Lost City, aka La Ciudad Perdida, got its name by the explorers that found the lost civilization, assuming it had been lost and now just discovered. This, however, isn't necessarily true, as the local indigenous people of course knew it existed. They, in fact, called the Lost City Teyuna. The Lost City has also been referred to as Infierno Verde, also known as the Green Hell. This was because up to seven years after its rediscovery, there was a constant battle and bloodshed between looters trying to access the gold. So we did it. We made it to the top. Technically, we made it to the top, right? But this trip's only halfway over because we still have to walk all the way back to Canada. But we did it. We made it up here. So we've reached the peak. We've stopped for snacks. And now we're going to head back down, down this way. And we've just taken some group pictures here because apparently this is the iconic photo where you can see everything. After we reached the peak of the lost city, we descended into a nearby village. It was interesting to note the difference between the men and the women's huts. The women's huts had one door and a darker roof as they would look after the children and cook and clean inside. The outside of the hut had a vertical zigzag pattern. This is in contrast to the men's huts. They have a horizontal zigzag pattern outside and they also spent a lot less time inside as they only use their huts for meetings. They therefore had two doors and a lighter roof. If you notice, they have antennas, which is for Wi-Fi, which is really cool and ahead of the times. Five minutes.
get to uh, swim in a little like watering hole thing. So we're leaving the lost city. We're making our way back to camp for lunch. Got that on camera. So we've made it back down those 1,200 steps. It was definitely more dangerous going down. Nearly died a couple of times, but now we're going back across the same river to our camp to have lunch and maybe have a dip in the river itself. Starting to see that we're on to something Feel it coming We'll keep running Nothing in our way And we got no reason to wait Let the journey take you where it wants to We'll continue to find our way through Anything we face We got what it takes Here we go We have been walking what seems hours. I mean, it has been hours, but finally, the campsite. Okay, lunch is served. We're back at the camp and we're ready to eat some good food. We left some stuff here when we left for breakfast. So now we've got to recollect those things and then continue three hours on until nighttime. Day three, let's go. Bonito. We're having our own little hike, the two of us. Mike is dying, so we just stopped for him. Do you want water? You see that grab, ladies and gentlemen? He is deceased. Right, we'll catch you in our next break. We think we're nearly here. We've been walking, walking, walking. Like, yep, we're close, we can see the river, the campsite's by the river, and then we go up and we're like, why are we walking away from the river? We were at sea level. So it's very much up and down, up and down, but we see roofs in the distance. We have to be here. Woohoo! Gracias Dios! We're back at camp. We've just gone in the river, had showers, and now Mike is packing our things away for the night. Now we're gonna go get dinner, but this is our bed here. We managed to cheat a double bed, so we're very lucky. Some people have hammocks, we have double beds. We can tell who the favourites are. Also, I recommend bringing a torch because there's no lights anywhere. And now, on our own with a hope in the clouds. We're starting to see that we're on to something Feel it coming now Here we go All we need is an open Woo! The lights are back on! Okay, good morning world. It's the last day, day four. Thank God. I think we've got about six hours of walking today. We have a couple of breaks, but we're not stopping for any food until afterwards. So today's going to be tough. Michael's knee is really hurting him today, so he thinks he might actually get a motorbike for the last two hours. So it's only 20 minutes. But I said, let's just see how you feel. Fingers crossed that we have a really great day and it's not too treacherous. See you at breakfast. Okay, time to go. It's quarter past six and we're leaving camp. Okay, it is 6.17. We are on our way, we've just had breakfast. And now we have like six hours of walking. Sin comer, comer? Sin comida. Yeah, we don't even get lunch today. Well, we do, but it's in six hours after six hours of walking. Enjoy some more clips of us randomly walking through the woods. been walking uphill for nearly 40 minutes now. So I've just stopped at a clearing. Mike and the others should actually be coming from this path up there. There they are, coming down. I was just about to say this is the longest 40 minutes of my life, but in the distance I see our next checkpoint. Hallelujah. Now it's time for fruit. Cheers. Made it up that god awful hill for 40 minutes. Now I get to eat a watermelon. We continue on, entonces, si no es, vamos. We made it Woo. <laughs> to the to the second stop. And now we have passion fruit juice and a chocolate. For the first 
Easy on his shoulder, his favorite place to be. Hola, Pajaro. Three hours to go. You dip your knee in. So after the last break that we just had where we had the juice and the chocolate, we had 15 minutes to the next camp, which we did. And now we have an one hour uphill until the next stop where you can get a motorcycle down if you want to, or if not, you carry on walking two hours down. So we are just trying to survive in these conditions, but is Michael peeing? Are you peeing right there? Okay, so Michael's peeing. We can do this, can't we, Mikey? Let's go. Okay, we're walking. Sticks to help him. Some bubble de la vida. Oh my god, we get knocked down by the horses. Mike is going. He's getting the bike down the last two hours. Adios! God, he might die on the way down by the looks of this trail. Two hours left. There is a snake. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Go for ya. Okay, cow on the loose. That was, <laughs> good, that was just walking. Hola. Oh my God, we're so scared we're gonna get trampled. A bull. And two dogs. Okay, we continue, continuamos. This is where we came to on the first day. So my group went ahead of me, so I'm by myself. Well, they're a different group and the guides are behind us, so I'm safe, but I still saw them. But hopefully not long left. How cool, but what type of plant is this? It's a fern. Oh, well, I get a reaction, I'm like, ow! <laughs> <laughs> On your arm, you have it? Oh, oh that is! <laughs> Beautiful, that is really cool. Gracias. <laughs> okay, so update on the situation. There's actually an hour left. It's better than two hours, worse than half an hour. So we're just gonna keep going, keep in good spirits. I'm gonna say some affirmations and just think about life. I'll see you guys at the end, Ooh, unless I die beforehand. Breathtaking and not just because I'm out of breath. Does that tree up there not look like something from a movie in a production name? <laughs> to be real with you guys, my feet are absolutely killing me. I am in pain and I'm just praying to be there soon. I can see a sign that I saw at the beginning, so I know I'm getting closer, but I think there's still some minutes, but fingers crossed. Oh my God, is this it? Okay, this isn't it. Oh my God, in the distance, I think this is it. I think this might be back in it, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is the place. My heart can't take it if it's not. Oh my God, I think it is. Oh my God. Where are my people? Oh my God. Oh my god, I can see Michael. I made it. I made it, amen, I made it. Oh my god, thank god. <sighs> what a G I am. What a fucking G. Finally. Another oh. <laughs> race. Oh. 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 Thank you. I don't deserve it, but thank you. No. Claro que si. Gracias. Gracias. How long have you been here? Like two hours? I don't know. How's your knee? Is it good to be? It hurts still. I need other things. I'm sure it does. But the bee's I'm helping? You know? The bee is helping. I didn't know that we were doing the hardest oh. hike in Colombia. Neither did I, to be honest. Like so everyone's like celebrating. We made it. I'm celebrating with a Coca-Cola. This is our food. <sighs> We've finished, now we're ready to leave. Waving goodbye to a worry, so we run wild. So guys, we're back at our hotel room now. We're all clean and showered, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And what an amazing experience the trek was. We had such a great time. This was definitely far more treacherous than I was even thinking about. It was the hardest thing physically I've ever done in my whole life. It was so difficult. This trip was also really great for meeting people, so we met a group of people that were obviously on tour with us, we've added on WhatsApp, uh, we're going to Palomino with, so um, it's a really great way to meet people if you are in Colombia and you're just dying to kind of get that socialization. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this vlog, I hope it was informative. If this is something you're thinking about doing, it's 100% worth it, what an amazing experience. If you're interested in the tour company that we went with, I'll link all their details down below, we definitely recommend Miguel, he was so fun 
fun, so lovely. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It will make all my body pain worth it. Comment down below if you've ever done the Lost City Trek or if this is something you'd be interested in. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button. Until the next time, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.